Did you know that it's possible to land on Venus without a parachute or even a rocket engine? This unique feature of the planet was discovered by the Soviet Union five decades ago. It was the result of a trial and error process that finally revealed the truth about one of the most interesting locations in our solar system. This is what the Soviets found when they landed on Venus and why they never went back. Venera is the Russian word for the planet Venus. It's also the name of a series of 16 missions that sought to understand, discover, and map out Earth's closest neighbor. Going back to 1961 and extending all the way to 1985, the Venera Project was a series of space probes and satellites sent to Venus to study the planet and gather more information. Ostensibly done for science, we can't ignore the political implications either. It was one of many ambitious plays by the USSR to assert itself as a more capable actor during the space race. While Mars tends to get all the attention in the 21st century back in the day, there was actually much more interest in studying Venus. Why is that? Well, we can observe the surface of Mars through high-powered telescopes on Earth, so we had a pretty good idea that there wasn't much going on over there, aside from a few fringe theories. It was generally accepted to be a dead planet, but Venus, on the other hand, presents a centuries-old mystery. All we can see from Earth is an impenetrable, unyielding cover of thick clouds. So what lies beneath? If Venus has clouds, then it has a dense atmosphere, unlike Mars, which means there could be life on Venus. The closer proximity to the Sun, combined with the insulating cloud layer, would indicate that it must be hot on Venus, with a tropical climate that spans an entire globe, covered with dense rainforests supporting all manner of alien insects and reptiles, like a prehistoric Earth. This was more plausible than the Martian theory but still not widely regarded by the scientific community of the day. Famous astronomer Carl Sagan had already popularized the notion that the unbreaking cloud cover of Venus was indicative of a greenhouse effect gone wildly out of control, superheating the planet, meaning the world below the clouds would be nothing more than a scorched hellscape. But there was only one way to find out. As with all of the early milestones in the space race, the Soviet Union was the first to attempt to study Venus up close. The year was 1961, and the Soviets built two probes, Venera 1 and Venera 2. This was a common procedure in the first decades of space exploration, to launch missions in pairs because there was still a very high likelihood that one of them would fail. You really have to appreciate the ambition of these primitive interplanetary flights. With nothing more than an adding machine to guide them, Russian engineers strapped a rocket engine to their probe, loaded it on top of a ballistic missile called the R-7, and set course for Venus. Then, they let it rip and hoped for the best. The good news is that both probes were able to fly within 100,000 kilometers of Venus. The bad news is that both probes experienced a full system failure before reaching their destination, and therefore, no usable data was returned. Then, in 1962, the Americans succeeded where the Soviets had failed. Their Mariner 2 probe flew within 35,000 kilometers of Venus and completed the first up-close observation of another planet. During a 42-minute scan of Venus, Mariner 2 gathered significant data on the Venusian atmosphere and the surface from both the night and day side. The findings confirmed Sagan's theory about the greenhouse effect. Mariner 2 microwave radiometer indicated temperatures of up to 49 degrees Fahrenheit, or 237 degrees Celsius on the day side. Mariner 2 also found that there was a dense cloud layer that extended from 56 to 80 kilometers above the surface. Based on this data, NASA largely decided to pass on further exploration of Venus in the short term, considering it an environment totally inhospitable for either man or machine so they switched focus to the Moon and Mars. But the Soviets were less convinced. They redoubled their efforts and prepared the second wave of Venera probes. They still had no idea just how bad things were about to get. It's 1966, and the Soviets have built a bigger and tougher spacecraft for Venera 3 and 4, weighing in at over 2,000 pounds. Equipped with a variety of instruments like a barometer, 
a radar altimeter, gas analyzers, thermometers, and a detachable pod that would serve as a descent module. The idea was that the descent module would parachute down through the Venusian atmosphere and take readings about the composition, temperature, and pressure all the way down to the surface. In reality, things got a little complicated. Venera 3 experienced another system failure along the way, but the Soviets' aim was true, so the probes still managed to hit Venus like a bullet and slam right into the surface, becoming the first man-made object to ever crash into another planet. The USSR actually scored a hat trick on impacting near-Earth bodies. They were the first to crash on the Moon, Venus, and Mars. There's probably a lesson in there. If you're going to fail, do it historically right. Venera 4 in 1967 was the closest yet to a success story. The probe made it all the way to Venus with all systems gone and dropped the capsule down into the Venusian atmosphere from here. The Venera missions, initiated by the Soviet Union between 1961 and 1985, aimed to explore Venus, our neighboring planet. Despite encountering multiple setbacks, they yielded critical insights into Venus's enigmatic atmosphere and surface. Early attempts faced technical failures, but in 1962, Mariner 2, a U.S. mission, provided valuable data on Venus's atmosphere. Meanwhile, the Soviet probes, like Venera 7, endured extreme conditions, revealing surface temperatures exceeding 900 degree F and atmospheric pressures akin to being underwater. Despite these challenges, the Soviet engineers persevered, refining their designs. In 1975, Venera 9 achieved a significant milestone by successfully landing on Venus, capturing the first ever photograph of its rugged terrain. This image, while not visually stunning, marked a historic achievement in planetary exploration, showcasing Venus's harsh yet intriguing landscape. The Venera missions stand as a testament to human ingenuity and determination, pushing the boundaries of space exploration and deepening our understanding of the solar system's mysteries. The Venera missions, especially Venera 13 in 1981, gave us amazing pictures of Venus. Despite Venus being super tough to land on, Venera 13 nailed it and sent back the first color snaps of its surface. We saw a lot of sandy rocks and cool shapes. The probe even landed near a cliff or hill, giving the pictures depth. Venera 13 also had new features to help it land better, like metal teeth and a drill to grab samples. Plus, it had a mic to record sounds on Venus, which sounded eerie. Venera 14, another mission, found rocks similar to ones on Earth's ocean floor. But after these missions, we didn't go back to Venus much. It's just really hard and expensive to explore there, and missions don't last long. Also, the Venera program stopped because of changes in what people cared about. As we look back on these space wins, we need to think about how to make our tech last longer in space so we can keep exploring. That's it for this video.